what to do, how to proceed. You know, once you get involved, the hard part for all of us on jobs like this is, you know, we've, we already have half an hour in this. You know, some of it we're, what's that? You said it's gonna be four hours. Well, yeah, I mean, that wasn't my point though. My point is, as a garage owner, as a technician, You've got a half an hour in this car already, just in research and pulling a diagram and looking at common denominators and looking at harnesses, visual inspections, and you're committed. This is one of the jobs where you need to finish, like finish your diagnosis. And generally what we do is, like I told you guys, five minutes, 60 minutes, doesn't matter. We're 30 minutes in this, we're not finding anything. We need to keep checking this circuit for at least another half an hour. And this would involve, and part of that can include going to the gas station, putting some gas in it, um, part of your road test. And then at the end of that hour, if we don't find anything, you stop, the customer's getting charged. This isn't free, we don't work for free. We have an idea of where our problem is, but you ask the customer how much more time they wanna spend. Um, if it takes two more hours to locate this intermittent fault, we need the okay from our customer to continue to investigate. We don't work for free. So just uh, advising you guys on how to make money doing this, you charge your initial, initial diagnostic fee, we tell the customer what we found, what it's not, right? What it's not meaning like this doesn't need a tune-up. It doesn't need plugs and wires. It doesn't need ignition coils. We have fuel injector fault codes on one bank that is causing his condition. So inform your customer where you are, inform him where you want to go. It might even be Mr. or Mrs. Customer, take the car, bring it back when it happens again, and then we'll continue from there. Communication's key. Um, if I am doing mobile diagnostics and I'm at a garage, my approach to this problem right now is exactly that. I'm gonna give it another half an hour doing my thing and I'll write up a list of what I found and then advise how to go from there, charge my diagnostic fee for traveling to that garage and doing my job and then taking that fee and running, right? You'll uh, maybe get a call back next visit and it's not free next time you show up. So I'm, I'm just tired of this working for free idea and that if you don't find anything, you can't charge bullshit, bull crap. You go to the doctor and they don't find anything. They say, oh, no charge. <laughs> no, come on. What do you do, man? What do you do? We're like at the end of our initial hour diagnostic time. How do you handle this? As a technician, you don't want to stop because customers don't like to pay. They don't like to pay unless you tell them what's wrong. Well, you know what? We need to tell them what's not wrong. And then we charge them. And then we have them come back. Um, we're gonna do our best to recreate this fault. And uh, we live to fight another day, is that the phrase? Yeah. Um, at this point, I put the fuse box back on. Um, Caleb and I were just gonna go get some gas and we're gonna get some food while we're test driving this car. Um, again, this is the time where you talk to the customer or you, or you talk to the garage owner, which is my brother, and he's not here. So we're just gonna proceed in that, you know, Caleb and I wanna have a good video for you guys and we wanna prove this fault. This isn't about, um, this isn't about us spending more of the customer's money. This isn't about charging more diagnostic time for us. I'm just trying to teach you guys how to charge for jobs like this. We shouldn't have to work for free. I have, as a technician, I have 10 other cars waiting for me. When you're a technician in the field, if you're a customer and you found this video for us that fix your cars, I have 10 more cars in the shop, 10 more cars in the parking lot that gotta come into my shop today and each one of those involve my time that I'm getting paid for. Do I all of a sudden not make money because of this one? Do you see how unfair that is for the technician? No, it's not like that. You charge for your time. We just need to be better communicators with our customer. We as technicians, we drop the ball 
all the time because we're not communicating well with our customers. And that's the good technicians. And now, not even talking about the bad ones out there that are parts changers. You see a trouble code and you change a part. You charge a customer money for these parts it never needed. In many circumstances, you can't do that. And the true diagnostic technician, he should be paid for his time. The customer never wants to pay. Why does the customer never want to pay? It's understandable he never wants to pay because nine out of every 10 garages out there are parts changers. So the customer knows nothing but a parts changer in most circumstances. And you're getting on the phone, a parts changer is getting on the phone and he's telling the customer, oh, I need more diagnostic time. The customer didn't want to pay the first diagnostic time because he can go to the parts store and get the free diagnosis and do the same thing. But that's not, that's not what troubleshooting is to that one out of every 10 garages you find that has an actual guy that can troubleshoot. You pay that guy. I'm talking to that guy. Welcome everybody, please order whenever you're with me. Unfortunately, you know how fast food is. This guy's car is gonna stink like this. Why are you putting it on me? <laughs> <laughs> Why it gotta be on me? Can you get us both in there? No. Oh, we should have got KFC in the chicken sandwich. What's wrong with you, Caleb? I'm sorry. By the way, whenever you road test a customer's car and go get lunch, that's not being paid by the customer, right? You take the customer's car to go get lunch. The customer's not paying you for that. Just, just want to be clear on that. That's the trade-off of taking the customer's car to lunch is... They're not getting, you're not charging the customer. And it's hard, it's hard to charge a customer as it is on stuff like this. And I think the one guy that got, got in trouble, he, I think he went to like Home Depot or something. He, you know, bought stuff. And you know, this legit, man. Like there's nothing wrong with that technician doing that. He was driving your car to break it as far as, you know, diagnostic fees go and where we are. And even though Caleb and I are, you know, probably on two hours on this, um, just trying to recreate it because we're just trying to make a good video for you guys. Um, this is still a single, in my opinion, this is a single diagnostic charge because there was no communication with the customer other than the initial. So this is, you know, this is not our two of charging, uh, especially because we're just driving around right now and we went to go get food. Uh, if we were the technicians in the shop, it'd be a little different. We drive, go get food, and, and come back straight to the shop, and you'd be done. You call the customer and go from there, see what the customer says. Um, this is a work van, too, so that's a factor as well. But, you know, one like this, it's difficult. Do you sell more diagnostic time or not? Because you might not want to. Because really, what are you gonna do at this point? Other than, other than drive the van, what are you gonna do at this point? Um, you know, many times you'd, you'd take cars like this and you'd let the technician drive it to and from work. You know, you'd leave your, technician leaves his car uh, at, at the shop and he takes this home for the day. That's been done many times. I've done it myself, the customer's cars. And then it helps the customer out, helps helps you out because then you're not wasting all that time you got all these other cars to work on and you don't have time to do this but no question the technician should get paid no question the garage should get paid for this job even though we don't know the specific area of the fault we only know some of it we know what it's not so we can tell the customer give the customer a list of what it is not and advise him, look out, little squirrel. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, we went and got lunch, so it smells like Arby's in here, but I mean, we were talking about that and how to bill for jobs like this, but I think at this point, what we tell him is when this acts up again, while it's running bad, have him go underneath and pull on the fuse box and see if the misfires go away. That's what that's what we need him to do for us. And see if there's like a solder joint or something. Just inside. if he grabs that fuse box and it stops misfiring, then we're gonna put a fuse box in this yeah. thing. You know? Yeah. How do you prove that? 
you know, without well, tearing it's so, it apart. You know, and yeah. it's so intermittent that, yeah. you know, that's just what we're going to do. I, I just feel like, well, or we're going to go in that direction. Like, yeah. uh, just have him drive it, tell him, you know, the variables where we are. And I've had this conversation with him a but at least times already. This time, though, he, he told needs me, to take it home, he, do what you need to do. And I'm like, man. This is one where you want to take care of this customer. He's, he's a nice he's guy. A, yep, and he's already put money into the, into it trying to fix it. Every Some time of it, I give him a bill, he's like tips me like fifty bucks. You know what I mean? Like, he, yeah. he, money's not an object, but I'm not a you know I'm not trying to. I want to fix it for him, but yep. it's like, what do you do? And I don't know. We did. I did my best, Tanner. This would be one on what, how to handle a car like this. You know, as far as the viewers go, I was telling them how we charge in a case like this. Um, I, you know, we're, we took it to lunch and did that. So we're not charging yeah. the customer for lunch driving. No. Um, but it's an hour, it's still an hour diagnostic time. And, yeah. and you know, you advise them where, where you are, what you found, and then you go from there and then... To me, it sounds like he don't want it back till it's fixed. So I have a feeling I'm so driving a pimp we were white just, for a little bit. We were just <laughs> talking about that too. I was like, sometimes you need to drive these things home with you back yeah. and forth. So I'm going to leave Dan or these test leads. And and what I want some pictures, man. If you see it, at least get me some snapshots. Okay. Okay? Yep. And I'll leave you the probe that's under there. And uh, yeah. I'm cool. sorry. No, it's fine. We still got... You know, the viewers are, are appreciative. We still got some good stuff out of this and, and stuff that he don't is want important. It's fixed, yeah. so hopefully we you get the finished video. Yeah. Right? We'll leave the windows down so we can de RVs the smell. That's and uh hopefully we get you guys an update on this one. No promises. This is the way it goes sometime. This is troubleshooting. You take the good with the bad. Hope you guys learned something and hopefully there'll be an update.